Hello everyone and welcome to this month's Best and Worst of Beauty! Yoohoo! By the time you're watching this, it's June! What? I just, can we just take a minute to like comprehend? Half the year is almost over. By the end of next month, half of 2017 is gone. That's insanity. Even that car horn, if you heard that toot toot, yeah I know, be scared. That's a strange feeling. This year has zoomed by. Galileo and Figaro just had their birthdays here at the end of the month of May. They turn five and one respectively. And I'm just I'm such a proud mama. They're both, you know, my beautiful boys. And my birthday is in June. So like, I'm not proud of me aging, but hey, I mean, I guess I should be, right? Another year down doing good. So I think that's enough of a life update from me. Let's just hop on into my pyramid. I've got my 10 product pyramid for you guys going from the worst products that I've tested out this month all the way up climbing up the pyramid to the best product that I've been using this month. I've got a good spread for you guys and I am excited to show you everything. So let's go ahead. Let's sing the song together and then we can go ahead and see what I got here. It's the best and worst of beauty. Whether good or bad, here's the down and dirty. So at the very bottom of the pyramid, this should really be no surprise if you watch my videos even kind of regularly. I mean, this was a very recent video that I just posted. But here we have two, two like, this is just, ugh. Do you see all the hairs on this? I don't like either of these. <laughs> I did a video comparing the Silly Sponge and the Eevee Blender. I don't like either of them for pretty much the same, but also different reasons. So I think as everyone knows by now, the Silly Sponge, like this thing, just does not do well at applying foundation. I hear it does great at applying moisturizers. I still have to try skincare with this thing. But, you know, both of these, they're just like these bendy, squishy silicone things. They're supposed to be the replacement to makeup sponges and stuff because these don't absorb product. Well, yeah, but they also apply your makeup really crappily so like okay and then the Eevee blender here this thing I would put it on my nose but I'm very scared that it will take all of my foundation off of my nose so this thing is like shaped like a beauty blender but it's got this like sticky and this texture to it uh, it's very strange and the stick makes like all the hairs in the world stick to this so if you have cats oh they do love playing with this though, so I'm glad it like actually came in handy. Yeah, the texture and stuff, it just does not blend out foundation well at all. And I feel like foundation gets stuck in all of these grooves in the texture anyway, so I'm like, okay, yeah, the Beauty Blender soaks up a little bit of foundation, but so does this in a sense. Like it doesn't soak it up in the sense that it goes into the pores of the sponge but you can't use it in the cracks and the nooks and the crannies and it makes it hard to wash and I just bleh. I don't like either of these. They're pretty much cat toys right now. Eevee Blender for sure. This one I still want to try out with uh, skincare, like many people have suggested, but the Eevee Blender for sure, this one's for the kitties. Now up next on the bottom of the pyramid, I feel horrible about this. I feel horrible. Like really, really horrible. <laughs> But I've got lip scents. I've been testing these out for the past like couple weeks straight now and I've finally like put all my thoughts together and everything. I was actually gonna be wearing one of these for this video but I just, I can't with these. I really don't, I don't like them. And I'm so sorry to the ladies that sent these my way. You guys were so sweet and so kind to have shared these with me, you know, like sent them to me and everything. When I do the review video and whatnot, I will definitely, you know, have the sellers, their information and everything in that video. That video will be coming out very shortly after this one. So I just want everyone to know that, like, it's not that I'm not grateful for these. I just really do not like them. They just don't work for me. I think this kind of a product, or at least this product, you know, in general, it's for the person that wears no other lip products. Because I think my problem is that I wear other lip products, and apparently that, like, affects the way that these adhere to your lips, and so these just don't adhere the greatest for me. They do a bit. I say that mostly based on this red one here. The sparkly frosty ones don't last well on me. Like they really don't and they feel kind of gritty. I really don't like these. They're not very opaque even with the three coats. The matte one or you know the not sparkly one, very good. You know definitely was able to be built up to an opaque color and this one wore the best on me. But the thing is with these, even you know the ones that do end up crumbling off. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. 
the problem with these is for well first off they smell horrific i mean alcohol is like what the first ingredient in this yeah lots and lots of alcohol here so when i first started using these they would like burn when i put them on they don't anymore i don't know maybe my lips just got used to it thankfully i didn't go through like an exfoliating process that they say you end up going through but these smell like hairspray and they taste like it too and that taste does not go away and for me that's a big deal breaker like a really big deal breaker if it's just on initial application okay that's still annoying but the fact that it never goes away so like when you're eating and stuff that taste ends up getting mixed into your food and I'm just not about that life I like food way too much to be ruining it with a lip product this red one stays on very well through eating however it does not stay on perfectly and with all of these the problem for me throughout the day is that it ends up like crumbling on the inner corners of my lips i mean if you don't know about lip scents they're like these weird thin things that you like apply on your lips and it sinks into your lips and then you seal them in with a gloss the gloss that they provide and the gloss just makes it very comfortable very cozy to wear i love the lip gloss very very nice but it doesn't work with other pro i mean you can use it with other products but it doesn't like make it non-transfer proof with these it's you know it seals this in and everything and it's completely transfer proof but the problem is if you don't get that gloss on quick enough or if you don't get it on evenly enough your lips end up sticking together and then that ends up peeling and flaking the color and it's just a horrible experience like throughout the day if you're just you know your lips are at rest and then you go to say something and then you like your lips in little places are stuck together and it's just like <sighs> I know I just ruined my lipstick and there, I can't I can't fix this because you have to like take all of it off before you can reapply and touch up because these I personally have found don't do well layering over themselves throughout the day so like I said I feel horrible that I didn't like these because the few of you ladies that did send these my way like that was so nice of you but they just didn't I, I if you want to try these try them but for me they were just a no-go so that's why they're at the bottom of the pyramid. I'm so sorry. And next up on the bottom of the pyramid here, it's not necessarily a bad product because the actual product is quite good, but the application of it, I just can't with this. This is the CoverGirl Total Tease Mascara. I have the waterproof version in very black. Like I said, the mascara is actually very good. Like it does wear very well on me. It applies well enough, but the wand on this thing is horrific. Like this is the scariest mascara wand ever. And I have stabbed myself far too many times on this stupid Venus flytrap apparatus on the very end of it. I just don't like the applicator at all. I can get it to work, you know, I just have to be super extra careful, but like I don't wanna have to be super extra careful when I'm putting my mascara on, you know? But granted, thankfully, this does look really good with my CoverGirl Super Sizer on top of it, so I'm gonna be able to keep on using this, get my money's worth, so. Not a total fail, but like this wand, I would never repurchase this, purely because the wand is horrible and this does I think in the video the review video if I have any pertinent reviews I will as always throw cards up in the corner for you if I can or else I'll have links down below if you want to watch reviews or whatever if you missed them I do believe if I'm remembering correctly this flaked a little bit on me but it was very very minimal and like I said I mean I wear the CoverGirl Super Sizer on top of this which is waterproof and doesn't flake at all so it makes this not flaky but like I said, I would never repurchase this. I hate the wand on it, so wah, wah, that's that. And then the last thing on the bottom of the pyramid here, it's not necessarily a bad product. I just personally think it's okay, but I have been using it this past month. This is the Olympus palette from Chrysana and Cosmetics. I had not heard of their makeup before, but I'm assuming the owner of the company sent me a little package my way with this and some of their liquid lipsticks, I do believe. And this eyeshadow palette just caught my eye. It was beautiful and I wanted to try it out. So I have been trying it out. And like I said, it's an okay eyeshadow palette. Like, I don't hate it. Definitely don't hate it. I think there's room for improvement, but I don't hate it. First off, I really, I know this is a weird, stupid thing, but I, I love the shape of this. This part of the palette is like slanted. I, it's stupid. It means nothing, but I really like it. So, I mean, it's just, it's a thin plastic case. I really wish, because I'm pretty sure this palette is 20 bucks. For 20 bucks, I really wish there was a mirror in this. I think the mirror would be very, very helpful, and then just somehow have the 
names down here or have the names on the back of the palette since there's nothing on the back of the palette anyways. I think that could be a huge improvement on this, but the colors very beautiful yes yes we love the colors and the thing that gets me most excited and like there's really no reason because it's not like I use black eyeshadow like hardly ever but this black eyeshadow is fantastic like super duper pigmented now the other shadows are hit and miss some of them are pigmented some of them are very very sheer which can be good you know like it just takes a certain person you know do you like sheer eyeshadows do you not go for a super impactful look. So I do think that you can make some good pretty looks out of this palette. I don't think that these colors are you know like anything out of the ordinary that we haven't seen in a palette before but I do think it's a nice cohesive blend of colors here for sure. The matte shades I do have trouble blending them. I think they just they don't blend the nicest which is too bad but overall like I said it's an okay palette. I don't hate it. It's not my favorite but I don't hate it. So that's that. I wanted to include it in the pyramid because like I said, I've been wearing this a decent amount this month. So there you go. Moving on up to the second tier of the pyramid, we've got a product where you're probably like, Cassie, shouldn't this be in an empties video? Well, actually, I just dumped this out into a different bottle because the reason that this is so far down, well, it's not like super far down on the bottom of the pyramid, but you know, down as low as it is. The sprayer on this thing is absolute crap. Now, what is this product? I don't know that you can read it from here. This is the Pharmacy Skin Dew Hydrating Essence Mist and Setting Spray with Echinacea Green Envy. I'm fairly positive we got this in a Sephora play box and I finally got around to testing it out because my L'Oreal Infallible setting spray that I typically use had run out so I wanted to test this and like I said the sprayer on this is horrible and it makes me sad and the reason I put it down as low as I did on the pyramid is because you know I thought okay maybe that's just on this little like tester spray thing could be understandable kind of I mean if I were a company and sending out like tester sprays I would want the pump to be like amazing so that people would want to buy it and not have that be a deterrent but I looked online and the reviews for this product like the full size apparently the sprayer is just as crap on the full size of this and this is just way too expensive of a product to get a crap pump it shoots out like a super soaker you spray it on your face and you're thinking like what I'm not a bad kitty why is someone spraying me with the super soaker you know what I mean like you want a nice fine mist going on your face when you do your setting spray and this just does not provide it so I dumped this into my L'Oreal setting spray bottle so that I could actually like get a nice fine mist and this stuff works really well it's got a funky smell to it like it's definitely I don't know if it's the echinacea green envy in it or whatever but it's got a very herbally scent to it like I don't know how else to describe it it's just got one of those scents you know what I mean like all natural herb bleh, essence I don't know I don't like it but thankfully the smell dissipates you know you just have to deal with it while you're doing the dry down and everything you know the dry down hand dance and then the smell is gone and I feel like it does a really good job at keeping my makeup in place it's not perfect and like I said I would never shell out the cash because I think things like the L'Oreal setting spray that I use the infallible one works just as well for a huge fraction of the price plus I don't have to worry about having a crap spray bottle pump on it so like I would never buy the full size but I do think, you know, I can't knock this in the sense that it does actually work. It's just the packaging is a no-no and I would never buy the full size. So there you go. <laughs> The next thing on the second tier of my pyramid here is the eyeshadow palette that I'm wearing today. I want to give this a much better review than I'm going to be getting. <laughs> It's a good product. I just like it is so not worth the money. <laughs> this is the NARS Narcissist Loaded Eyeshadow Palette. I bought this for myself as a treat. I saw it. I wanted it. I got it. You know, I've never tried NARS eyeshadows before and I will be doing like a full review of this so do not despair. But my overall impression here is that, like I said, beautiful palette it's not worth your money. You can see in here it's got a nice big mirror in there just gorgeous and the shadows are beautiful but again just like with that other eyeshadow palette that I just mentioned the Chrysanna Anne this is nothing that we haven't seen before you know what I mean and from this collection of eyeshadows you know this is what I'm basing my review of NARS eyeshadows on because I haven't tried any other ones not that I know of. They're good they're not the best eyeshadows ever, but they are really good. Like, they're not crappy. They blend beautifully. They don't blend the best, 
but they do blend very nicely. They are the type of shadows that are pigmented enough. You know what I mean? Like, when you do finger swatches, most of them, except for this matte brown one, this is kind of a crap shadow, like, really shouldn't be in this palette. The rest of them are really nice, but that dark brown is just very patchy. But these, you know, if you use your finger, beautiful wham-bam pigment, very nice. But with a brush, it's there, but you build it up. And like I said with the other palette, you know, that really can be a good thing and not something to like knock a palette on because it can be good to be able to use things sheerly and it can be good that you can then build them up. I just feel like I can get a few looks with this. Like differentiations on the few looks to make it, you know, maybe nine looks or something, but you're getting the same few looks with however you end up combining these eyeshadows. I still think it's beautiful and like as my first NARS eyeshadow palette, like I really like it. But like I said, is it worth your money? Absolutely not. Like, this is very expensive and like you just, you probably already have eight eyeshadow palettes that have these exact same colors in it type of a thing, you know what I mean? I'm including it higher up on the pyramid than other things just because I really am enjoying it. It's probably just the fact that, you know, it's got NARS written on it and that's just exciting for me because I love, I don't know why, I just like the aesthetic of NARS. And this was a treat yourself moment. It's a good eyeshadow palette. Worth your money? No. I don't think so anyways. But like, if you're wanting to treat yourself or something, then yeah. I mean, I don't feel like I wasted my money on this. I just feel like, Cassie, did you really need to buy this? No. But I'm glad I have it. You can't have it back. You know, it's that kind of a feeling. And the third thing here on the second tier of the pyramid is the highlighter I've been wearing this month. Oh, this is the same as the NARS palette in the sense that like, this really is nothing special. It's so overpriced, like, you don't need to buy this. You have all of the highlighters like this already, but like, such a treat, oh my gosh, such a treat. This is the Dior Dior Skin Nude Air Luminizer. I have mine in the shade 002, I think it's just like pink or something, the shade name. It is a pink highlighter, and you guys, it is beautiful. Very pigmented, very blendable, very blingy on the cheeks for sure. Like this is not a natural looking highlighter in any way, shape, or form, no matter how you put it on. I mean, it is wham bam, and then once it kind of like wears down throughout the day, it doesn't wear off. It definitely, some of the pigment does kind of go away, but what sticks behind is like almost like opalescent flecks of beauty. Like when you see this in the sun, it is just like... You know, it's one of those reactions that you get when you look at someone's cheeks with this on. My mom wanted me to put this on her one day when she was over here, and so I was like, yeah, okay. So I put it on her, and then we went to Bachman's to go around and, like, look at plants and stuff so she could get them and put them in her garden. And I saw her, like, in the sun and on her cheeks, and I was just like, wow. My highlighter's pretty, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I really like it. Very smooth, very nice. You feel like a freaking queen. Did you hear that magnetic closure? Let me do that for you again. Ugh. Like, this is one of those magnetic closures that just, like, makes you feel like you're alive. I don't know that anyone else shares the same enthusiasm as I have for magnetic closures on their makeup products, but it's important to me. I mean, it's not, like, a deal breaker, but it's such a nice treat. Like I said, just, like, looking at this packaging, the raisedness of it, I mean, you just, you feel like a queen. Like, mm, yes, good morning, world. It's time to put on my Dior. You know, you can find tons of highlighters that do the exact same things for a much cheaper price, but like, I treated myself and I, I really, really like it. And moving on up to the second to the top tier of the pyramid here, I have got a new moisturizer, yay! This is from Paula's Choice, my favorite skincare brand. This is the Calm Redness Relief Moisturizer for normal to oily skin. It claims to be anyways in the name, it's supposed to give redness relief, which I don't have too much trouble with, but what I like is that this is for extra sensitive skin. I don't have extra sensitive skin, but I do think that I have sensitive skin for sure, especially my facial skin. And I just, I needed a new moisturizer, you know? I needed something that was gonna like give me a deep down hydration. The last hydrate, the last hydrator, the last moisturizer I was using, which you will see in my empties video coming up. I would have done it right before this one, but I figure since we're going into June, I should get this one out first. So probably one of the next, I mean, one of the next videos you guys see will be my empties, my next empties video anyways, my next installment. But once I ran out of that moisturizer, I needed something a bit more heavy duty than what I was using because a lot of people were saying, Cassie, your skin looks dehydrated. And I'm like, 
Probably, yeah. <laughs> so I tried this one out from Paula's Choice. I didn't pick this one per se. I'm pretty sure this came for, like for free. Paula's Choice always, like, I always, first off, have my referral code down below if you want to use it. If you're a new customer to Paula's Choice making your first order, you can get $10 off of your order for that. It also earns me $10 so that I can spend it on more Paula's Choice skincare. It is my favorite skincare brand. It is my holy grail skincare brand. I love, love, love Paula's Choice. I've made many videos for them and on them before. It's just, it's a great skincare line. It's all, you know, cruelty free, no fragrances, just really good. And they also always have like extra good promo deals going on. Like I always wait until there's one that's, you know, something that I'm interested in, but they'll give away like free full-size moisturizer of your choice or free full-size eyeshadow palette of your choice. Like just what? Okay. And then, you know, sometimes they'll have the promos like 15% off your whole order. Like just, they've always got great promo codes. I'll just say that much. And I think this was one of them, and I'm really glad it was. I really like this moisturizer. It's one of those ones where it doesn't, like, feel hyperhydrating in the sense that it doesn't, like, spearmint cooling, you know, that kind of thing. What is it? The New York Peppermint Patty? Is that what it, the commercial for those? I don't have TV. <laughs> but you know what I mean, where they, like, after they take a bite. It doesn't feel like that but it still feels like it went deep down and does a good job. I just feel like my skin looks a lot plumper and more even almost since using this. So like maybe the redness relief does work and it kind of took some of that away and it's evened out my skin. But overall, I just really like this. It does a good job. It doesn't like ultra mattify me like the last moisturizer from Paula's Choice I was using did and I didn't like that one because it was too much. But it also doesn't make me greasy or oily. I just think this does a really nice job. It's super lightweight. Just nice. I really, really like this moisturizer. So I am very, very happy that this was a promo code at some point because I don't know that I would have tried it otherwise. Maybe I would have. But either way, I'm glad I tried it now. So yay, Paula's Choice. I just, I love, I love it so much. <laughs> Next up here, the second product to the top of the pyramid. Did that make sense? I've got a foundation that I've been wearing quite a bit this month. This is the Hourglass Immaculate Liquid Powder Foundation. This is the new and improved version of it, and I have mine in the shade Shell. Hourglass did send this to me to test out in a video, but as always, I told them before even giving them my address, like, I only give 100% honest reviews, just so you know, if you don't like that, don't send me the product. And they were like, no, that's what we want. And I'm like, great. Okay, so this is a really good product, you guys. Like, really good. It has a bit of a learning curve to it because it really does. It goes from a liquid to a pretty much powder finish. It doesn't feel powdery, but it's got that like silky powder kind of a feeling to it. But it's got the staying power of a liquid, which I really like. And it also really does help to keep you not like completely matte, but for me anyways, it keeps me looking normal. You know what I mean? Like I still feel like I probably should blot once throughout the day, but it's nothing excessive. It's just like a normal amount of grease. I feel like the coverage is good. I feel like this is a pretty solid medium. Maybe you could build it up, but I feel like if you did it might get a bit cakey because this stuff, like if you have any dryness on your skin, don't don't bother with this foundation. Like for me right now, I haven't been wearing this for like maybe the past week because I've had some pretty bad zits pop up. And so I've been like trying to suck all the life out of them. So they're a bit dry in those areas. And the only reason I'm wearing this today is because I'm doing this video. But then you can see that like this looks really not good on dry spots of your skin. Like it just is not cute. So if you have anything other than oily skin, I really would say stay away from this. But if you do have truly oily skin, you're gonna love this. Like it just, it goes on so nicely. I feel like it blends out so easily, I guess. Maybe effortlessly is a more better word, a more better word. Oh, I should just stop while I'm ahead, shouldn't I? But I really do. I just feel like this goes on really well. It wears beautifully. It does fade a little bit. Like I would say in those places where you get like extra greasy, for me that's like on my nose and around my nose, it definitely 
definitely does fade in those spots, but it's nothing like, you know, huge patches came off and you can see like splotches of your skin underneath. It's just a very graceful fade and I just think this stuff is really great. Like I'm really glad I got the opportunity to test it and I've been using it and I've been loving it, especially now that we're going into summer and I am more oily. So like, it's just been good for me and I've really, really been enjoying it, like I said. So yay, thank you Hourglass, this stuff is great. <laughs> And last but not least, top of the pyramid, I've got a collection of products, kind of. I mean, this isn't even all of them, you guys, but these are my Bite Beauty Amuse-Bouche lipsticks. I have so many and I love them. Oh. I mean, technically, I guess I don't have more than this. I have many more Bite lipsticks, but they're not in the, like, new Amuse-Bouche formula. They're in the old Luminous Creme formula. Isn't that what they were called? I've done reviews on both formulas if you want to watch those, but either way, I love them. I'm wearing one of them today. Uh, Radish. Radish is the one. It's just beautiful. Like, this is what I mean. Like, I would so much rather wear this kind of a lipstick than lip sense. I'm sorry to keep saying that lip sense. I'm really, really sorry. But this is so comfy to me. It is so lightweight, barely there, but there enough where it's like, okay, I've still got lipstick on. You can rub your lips together. You don't have to worry about it crumbling or sticking. It's just creamy and smooth. Fades beautifully. Like, no, it's not transfer proof. You know, it's a it's a lipstick. You just blot your lips before you go to eat and you're good to go. Or heck, you know, you just wipe it all off and then you eat your burrito and it's good to go. You reapply when you're done, you know? So these go on so smooth, so pigmented. I mean, these truly are like a one and done swipe kind of a lipstick. I mean, you can build them up. I usually do just because that's how I'm used to applying lipstick, but like so nice, so beautiful. Lasting power is gorgeous. I mean, if you're only like drinking out of a can or drinking through a straw or something, you can get like a solid five, six hours out of these, no problem. And the fade is just so graceful, barely there. If it does start to fade somewhere, just rub your lips together and ta-da, it's redistributed and you are You're just looking so pretty and I just love these lipsticks so much. Two of- no, way more than two of these. A lot of these. All of these? No. No, no. <laughs> All except for one of these were sent to me by you guys and like I, I love them so much. Like thank you. Like these are such a treat. Such, such a treat. I mean, they're expensive. Yes, Bite Beauty lip products are expensive, but if I could only have one brand of lipstick, this might be it. This really might be it, <laughs> now that I'm like thinking about it. These, I love the NARS Audacious, but like I think I might pick these. I love the smell of these. It's a very peculiar scent in a good way, but it's like almost a mix of lemon cream and a mint. It's strange, but it works. It's just like a very refreshing scent. I don't know, but sweet at the same time. It's just really, really nice. They're just... They're delightful in every way, shape, and form, and I love them. And I've been wearing them a lot this month, so that is going to do it for me for today, for this month's Best and Worst of Beauty! Like I said, it's gonna be June by the time you're watching this. I hope you had a wonderful month of May. It went by quick, but here we are, we're at the end. If you had a great month, great. I hope that continues for you into June. If you didn't have a good month, then I hope the month ahead here in June will be great for you. I'm gonna be turning 27. That is so weird to say, but uh, you know, it's gonna, well, unless I die first, it's gonna come no matter what. So I hope you enjoyed seeing this spread of beauty products from me that I have been enjoying and not enjoying this past month. If you did enjoy the video, please do go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate it. And if you're new here, hey, hi, hello, how are you? You can go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more content from me in the future. I'd love to have you here. And as always, I just hope you guys are all doing well. And until next time, just stay well until then. Bye!